Hey guys, and welcome to the Farm and Pastor's Wife. Hey everybody. Tonight we're making Christmas Icebox Fruitcake. The bomb. Please, if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Give Hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So you get all those notifications when the new videos come out. That's right, and we and have a lot of fun here. Hit the thumbs up. Yep. Give, us, give us a like, leave us a comment. Uh, all those things help the channel out, and as you help us, we help you because it inspires us to do a better job yes. for you guys, the viewers. Thank you all to the new subscribers. Yes. She's had like 3,000 new subscribers lately. this week, and it's been on fire. But tonight, this fruitcake, Icebox fruitcake, is beautiful, and you can see there's a piece missing, so uh, <laughs> get ready for a good recipe. And y'all, somebody has asked about my blue dishes. Stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll share that at the end. Um, I kind of explain the story behind <laughs> the blue dishes. So y'all stay tuned. This video is a good one. Hey guys, so you have waited patiently for this icebox fruitcake recipe and I am about to give it to you. I'm so excited. Um, We've had a lot going on here, a lot of remodels. See, my old mirror is still sitting there. <laughs> but anyway, that's what's been going on. And so in between days of being active with the remodel stuff, I mean, I didn't do anything, but making decisions and stuff like that. Um, I've tried to do some videos and tried to do some Christmas vlogging. So now it's for the icebox cookie. Let me show you what you're going to need. <clears throat> going to kind of spread you out here. You're going to need a pound of walnuts. It's a very nutty icebox cake. You are going to need a pound, which these, this was a three pound bag and this is a two pound bag. So I'm thinking it's four cups of each. So four, eight cups total of nuts, four of the walnuts, four of the pecans. Um, you are going to need two of the large jars of maraschino cherries, the red ones. Now, if you can find green maraschino cherries, because they sometimes have them, you need one jar of the green. But if you can't find the green maraschino cherries, just get your fruitcake um, green cherry candies, and um, that'll be fine. You also need about half of a container of the pineapple candies. Um, it, the recipe calls for four slices of pineapple candies, but these aren't slices. They're in like the little tidbit. So I'm going to use about half of the can. And if I want more, I'll just kind of judge it as I go. You're also going to need a large bag of the marshmallow, mini marshmallows. Now this was the only bag they had, so I couldn't compare if it was a bigger bag or not. So I bought two of them. And so I'll put the one in, and if I need more or want more, because this is kind of, you can make this recipe to your taste. It's, there's no baking science to it because it doesn't bake. It's just putting in here what you want. Like if you wanted coconut, you could put coconut in this. I'm not putting coconut in this because I have a lot of people going to be tasting it and eating it, and not everybody likes coconut. Now, oh, I don't have my, hang on, i got to go get one thing that I left. Sorry, I'm back. You're also going to need a box of graham cracker crumbs or if you just buy a box of graham crackers and put them in a food processor and crumble them up. Um, but I'm just using the already pre-crumbed crumbs. The pre-crumbed crumbs. And you're going to need one can of sweetened condensed milk. Now, I have two handy because sometimes I think one is not quite enough and I add a little bit from a second one. Um, so, that's it. Now let me tell you what I'm gonna do. Oh, you also need a two pan. Now, you can try another pan if you want. This is what I've always made it in because I can take the center out. And um, anyway, it's what I've always used. Now, you can try something different if you want to. I don't know if it'll work or not. But I'm going to grease this really good with some Crisco. I don't think I need to flour it because it's not baking or anything. I just need it to be easy to slide out. So, I'm going to grease it really good. Also, 
while I'm, I'm going to pause for just a minute and I'm going to chop these up, my nuts, into smaller pieces because these are halves. These are big pieces, so I want to um, chop them up in a little bit. So I'm going to chop those up. Also, my cherries, both red and green, and even the pineapple, I'm going to cut in smaller pieces. So um, we're, I'm going to drain these. I'm going to cut them up like into quarters and... Um, We'll be back when I have all that done. And when we come back, I'll probably have red fingers. And uh, so we'll be back in just a little bit. Okay, guys, so I've got four cups of walnuts, four cups of pecans. Let me show you. I've got them both in this bowl. There's some big pieces, and you can see some of the fine. So you, having a little bit of both is fine. <clears throat> so gonna mix those up together and if I see any really big pieces I break it up but it doesn't really matter because it's all going in so to that we're gonna pour in I was looking for a knife but I don't need it our graham cracker crumbs They're going in. We're also going to add in our marshmallows. And it'll be at the mixing stage. And I usually, if you have a strong man that wants to come in here and mix this, they can. So it's in the stage where my son comes and mixes it all together. And my bowl is really not big enough. That we'll decide if we need more um, coconut, I mean more <laughs> marshmallows. And um, I haven't even put the candies in here yet. And I am deciding, I'm making a executive decision. I'm going to put a little bit of coconut. I had a little bit left in a bag. It's not a whole lot. But I'm putting it in. I hope that's okay. But, um, I don't think a lot of people are going to be coming to the house anyway since all the stuff going on with the pandemic. So, <clears throat> and my family likes coconut. I may have to find a bigger bowl. And that's going to be a problem. So, let me see if I can find a bigger bowl because I haven't even added the candies in and it's about to overflow. Okay, guys, so I didn't have a bowl big enough. I don't know what I used to mix this up in before. But anyway, here's my solution. I've divided it half and half. And then I think once we put the condensed milk, it'll sink down a little bit. And so I stirred my candies up. And I'm going to half them as well. We're going to do half and half in each bowl. And I have an extra bowl of candy because I was going to make um, an extra container of the candies and I was going to make um, cookies. But I don't think I'm going to get to them this year because we're just so involved in the remodel. Alright, so I'm going to open up one can of cream of sweetened condensed milk. <clears throat> and I'm going to pour half in each bowl. And let Isaac, he's already been in, he's washed his hands, and he is ready to start stirring. And there's only one way to do that, and that is to go in with your hands. Um, he's going to mix it for me with his hands. And um, and then we may combine them and put them together once they've um, come together. And I'll have another can handy in case um, sometimes you need more of the condensed milk for it to come together because you really just want it to come together and stick together 
And then while he's doing that, I'll watch for the marshmallows. I think the one bag is going to be plenty on the marshmallows. I don't think we need to add any marshmallows. But we'll see. And when we get this going in the pan, the cake pan, we push down. Isaac will push down and really um, put some pressure on it. But anyway, the other extra candies I have, we're going to decorate the top. And it's also a good idea. Whoops. <laughs> Y'all see that? It's also a good idea to put pecans on the top for decoration because that way if anybody comes that is allergic to pecans it's kind of an alert a red flag signal stay away from this one so okay Isaac you can come over here and start mixing up this is if do you want a spoon to start it with or are you just going in with your hands he's going right in y'all And he's folding to begin with to incorporate everything. He's done this a lot for me over the years. Even when he was a little boy, he came in and... Are we going to need more condensed milk? Yeah. We usually always need more condensed milk. But that's what makes it good. Okay guys, he's going to keep mixing. I'll bring you back when we decide to incorporate it together to kind of mix them together. Okay guys, you can see in this one how everything looks good and wet. And that's the way you want it to look. And so he's working on this one, getting that one to look like this one. I may go ahead and start spooning this bowl. I think it would be easier just to spoon it in there instead of mixing them. Probably. I'm going to go ahead and start spooning this into the pan and pressing down. Okay guys, I've gotten one bowl in here and it's about filled this cake plate up, but Isaac's gonna start pressing down. He'll use his fist and press down and then we'll add this one to it. And the more you press it, the more it's gonna stick together and the denser it gets. This, you want this good and dense and thick and heavy and that's just what it is, it's a fruit cake. All right, so let's go in with some of this. All right, when I get this in, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. <laughs> I'll bring you back. Okay, guys, so here it is all pressed down. And so I'm going to take some of these pecan halves, make sure they're pretty halves. I think most people would know to stay away from this cake if they were allergic to pecans. Like I was saying, I think most people would know to kind of stay away from it. But just in case you have a little child that just sees the red and green and thinks, ooh, but they're allergic. If they see the pecans, they'll know. I can't go near that. My kids did not have food allergies, thank the Lord. And so it's sometimes hard for me to think about that. Um, <clears throat> and I'm just putting, I'm going to make... Um, four little flower arrangements here. Gonna open up the green ones. And you could cut these in half if you wanted to, but I'm kind of done with it. kind of over it just to give it some pretty color on top oops okay guys now I'm gonna wrap this up really tight 
it has been pressed in here really good and we want to get this good and cold and so it's going in the refrigerator and we will be eating and tasting this tonight so there you have it the icebox fruit cake and as far as the pineapples go I used anywhere between half of that container which is the small which is this size container um, this says eight ounce I use on the pineapple I used about I actually used almost the whole container today but anywhere between half to a whole is fine um, and I say I put in about a coke a cup of coconut the four cups of each nut two cans it ended up using two cans of sweetened condensed milk and um, two jars of maraschino cherries one container of the green cherries a uh, one large bag of marshmallows and one box of graham cracker crumbs so there it is and i'm going to wrap it up really good with saran wrap pushed down even more and then tin full and i'm sticking it in the refrigerator and we'll taste it tonight Okay, guys, are you ready for us to try the icebox fruit cake? Hey, everybody. Look, look at it. Look at that beaut right there. So pretty. Now, let me tell you what I did. I un... You what? I unpanned it. Un no, I it? took it out of the pan off camera just in case it was to fall apart. But it didn't. It's perfect. It's a miracle. But what I did was I just took a knife and ran around the side just to loosen it up. And then I turned it upside down until I heard the plop. So we're ready to try it. He's got his milk ready, but I don't have any coffee ready. That's her own fault. That is. No, it's not. I was cooking your supper. I mean, you've known all day we're going to try this. Thing. You're right. Yeah. I have known all day. Now, this is the kind of cake that the longer it sits, the, the better, better it is. Gets. Like the orange slice cake. I didn't say that when I made that the other day. I have a cramp in my hand. You got cramp? Here, I'll cook. <laughs> you've got the beef. You talk. Anyway, I didn't say that the other day when we made the orange slice cake, but that's another one of those that the longer you let it sit, the better it gets. And as long as you have some of that orange and powdered sugar glaze every day, just just cover it up. Isn't Look that, that pretty? That goodness right there. Turn oh. it on this side. This side's really pretty. See the marshmallows right there? Here, look at there. Ooh. Flip it over so you can see the other side too. There's the other side. And it's been in the refrigerator. How long, sweetie? Um... What, four hours, five hours? Probably, thereabouts. And it's going back in the refrigerator, and it's going to be delicious, and I get the first bite. Yeah, that's not fair. It's very fair, because I made it. The Bible says, obey your husbands. <laughs> uh, yes, it does. How long is it going to take you to get a bite there? I don't know. Grandma was slow, but she was... Old. Old, yeah. Mm -hmm. So am I. <laughs> yeah. How is that? Mm. Give me that. <laughs> mm. I'll wait all year for that cake. Mm. Really good. This is a phenomenal cake. Y'all, there was, there was like a few crumbs left when we were putting it in the pan. That would have fit in the pan, but right. Isaac didn't want it to fit in the pan. He was like eating it out of the bowl. The sweet and condensed milk, mm. along with all those nuts. This cake is delicious. If you yeah, like, all it needs is a cup of coffee. If you like fruitcake. Black cake, coffee. That was really good. I don't like fruitcake, but I love this. It's the delicious. Hardest, the hardest part is mixing it up. Yeah, that's the hardest part. And I can do it, but my hands get to hurting and cramping. So it's just easier for me to get Bryant or Isaac one to do it. But if you don't have a big strapping that was ugly. handsome man to stir your fruitcake, it's okay. You can do it. Go ahead and guns, yeah. baby. Well, you're so bad. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoy this. You still have plenty of time to get it made before Christmas. And that is what a beautiful table piece that makes. Yep, yep. I mean, can you, that is stunning. That is absolutely stunning. So y'all enjoy this cake. Now, before we sign off and say goodbye, a lady has asked me about my dishes up here. So hang on. 
I'm going to explain that and then we'll come back and say good night. Okay, so to the lady who wanted to know about my blue dishes up here. As most of you know that have followed me a while, this is my childhood home. And these plates belong to my mom. But when I moved to Tobaccoville, she gave them to me. And, and I say they belong to my mom with the exception of the flow blue plate right there in the center. Um, my snowman is covering up one of my prize possessions, that one right there, the bowl. But uh, my mama gave them to me when we moved to Tobaccoville. And of course, I don't have, I didn't have this beautiful blue cabinet to put them on. <laughs> so when I lived in Tobaccoville, they occupied the shelves of the brown cabinet here. Um, so when we moved back home, there was no, oh, and my other prize possession is the cow picture, picture right there. <laughs> um, there was no place to put them except back where they came from, from when my mom was living. And um, so that's where they went. I don't know when we remodel our kitchen. I don't know where they will go. But uh, she loved antiques and I love antiques. Now let me tell you about the flow blue plate. My husband also loves antiques. And so that was a connection him and my mom had. And my mom bought him that flow blue plate back there. And if anybody knows about antiques, you know flow blue is pretty pricey. Um, now my this is pottery. I'm from Seagrove area, and which is the pottery capital around here. And as you can see, this this is from Seagrove, and. But my favorite plate is this square, but it's kind of got the corners chopped off. <laughs> that is my favorite plate. And then my second favorite plate is this one back here. And I think it's Little Boy Blue. Anyway, I don't know what it is, but I love him. So that's a little story about my dishes. They were just some my mom collected. And they're beautiful, and I love them. Okay, guys, that's the information about my dishes. So, but thank you for watching the Icebox Christmas Fruitcake, or Christmas Icebox Fruitcake, whatever you want to call it. But I hope you enjoy it. It is absolutely delicious and out of this world, not to mention beautiful. So, thank you guys for watching the Farm and Pastor's Way. <laughs> be sure to hit the subscribe button the bell notification and give me a thumbs up thank you guys for watching and remember if the grease is hot enough you can fry anything bye y'all